Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at six excellent value budget monitors for photo editing and video editing. This is the one for the content creators out there who want an excellent quality monitor but do not want to give up one of their kidneys just yet. So the prices are going to range for from $160 to $880. So there's something there for every wallet. We're going to take a look first of all at the BenQ SW240. This is a 24 inch 1920 by 1200 monitor. It covers 99% of the Adobe RGB color space, 95% of DCI-P3 and comes in at $400. Now it does come factory calibrated and also features hardware calibration. It's a very similar price and spec to the Dell UP2516D monitor that we looked at in the professional monitors video. In some ways, the Dell might be a little superior at 1440p. It has a much higher resolution at the same price and otherwise very similar specs. This monitor, as well as the Dell, comes in with the 8-bit plus 2 monitor. That's a 10-bit monitor using FRC and has a 14-bit 3D lookup table. The next monitor we're going to look at is the Philips 276 E9Q DSB monitor. I wonder who comes up with the names for these Philips monitors. It's a full HD monitor at 27 inches. That gives us a pixel pitch of 81 pixels per inch. That's a little bit soft. It has an 8-bit panel. Gives us 125% of the sRGB color space, which at $160 is pretty hard to beat. It doesn't come factory calibrated, so you might want to do some calibration of your own on the monitor. Next, we're going to look at the ViewSonic ColorPro VP2468 monitor. This is a 1080p Full HD monitor at 24 inches. Surprisingly, it gives us an 8-bit panel made up of a 6-bit plus frame rate control panel. And then on top of that, it gives us a 14-bit 3D lookup table. The price is $230. It does come factory calibrated and gives you access to a range of color spaces, including sRGB and BT709. The next monitor is going to be the BenQ EW3270U monitor. This is a 4K UHD monitor at 32 inches. It's a 10-bit monitor with the MVA panel. Now, when BenQ say 10-bit, I generally assume that that's going to be an 8-bit plus FRC monitor. The contrast ratio is excellent, as you would expect for an MVA monitor. It's 3000 to 1. It covers 95% of the DCI-P3 color space, 88% of Adobe RGB, and also sports HDR10. The price is $500, but you do get free sync. I think that's a pretty reasonable price for a gaming monitor that can also be used for content creation. Next, we're going to look at the Acer Nitro XV272U monitor. This is a QHD 1440p monitor. That's 2560 by 1440 pixels. It's 27 inches and it's also a 10 bit monitor using an 8 bit panel and frame rate control. The monitor covers DCI-P3 at 95%. It's $450. It's basically a good gaming monitor with excellent potential for content creators. So you've got that high DCI-P3 coverage, but for the gaming, you've got free sync, you've got 144 Hertz, and you've also got a response time, which can be as low as one millisecond. The Delta E is less than two. So this is another factory calibrated monitor. 
So you could use this monitor for gaming, you could use it for content creation, you can use it out of the box. I think it's a very, very good quality monitor. Finally, we're going to look at the ViewSonic Color Pro VP2785 4K monitor. This comes in at $880. Boy, that's hundreds of pounds. Now, you might think that's pretty expensive for a budget monitor, but I think you'll be hard pressed to find another 4K monitor which has all of these properties at a similar price. We're talking 27 inches. It has a 10 bit panel using frame rate control. All of these monitors seem to use frame rate control. Most of the professional monitors under $1,000 all seem to be 10-bit using frame rate control. Anyway, it's an HDR10 monitor, has excellent coverage of the Adobe RGB color space, basically 100%, uh, delta E of less than two, and gives you a whole bunch of built-in color spaces. So again, it's another monitor which will be ready to use for your content creation, for your video editing, for your photo editing, straight out of the box. At 880, it's pretty expensive, but I think still very good value for money. Let us leave it at that. I hope you found some of that useful. I'll be interested to know what you think of this list. So leave a comment below. And if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos. I will see you guys later. Bye.